Firstly, thank you for taking the time to review my appeal. The incident happened last July, but I remember it clearly, particularly the frustration I felt as I realised I'd gone into a restricted road, even though I was trying my hardest to obey the rules. So, on the 20th of July last year, I was riding north along Vauxhall Bridge Road. I was not familiar with the route or the layout ahead, and since I'm on a motorbike, I don't have the benefit of sat-nav maps or audible directions. I completely relied on signage to guide me. TfL are disputing my appeal, so I have gone back and gathered the following pictures that show what I could and could not see as I rode along that day. This is what I found. TfL have pointed out that there is a green direction sign just before the left hand turn toward Wilton Road. Here it is, hidden behind a big tree and a bus shelter with brightly illuminated video screen. It is impossible to see what the sign says. And when buses park at the stop, as they frequently do, it becomes even worse. There is no safe option for motorists to comprehend this sign, because by the time you pass the tree, the sign is already at an acute angle. Stopping or taking your eyes off the road to look left is not safe. Because at this turning, there are two lanes of traffic, concealed entrances, a solid grey structure blocking the view ahead, traffic merging from the opposite direction, vehicles passing on either side, traffic lights and random jaywalking pedestrians. All these must be navigated safely in a very short period of time. These multiple visual distractions make this a very challenging junction and the placement of important signage behind a tree is just appalling. So as I ride past the hidden sign there are more visual challenges to come. Just as you clear the shed and you're leant over you're also watching out for vehicles swapping lanes and overtaking and this is where the motorist gets the first opportunity to see the rapidly approaching junction. We've only a split second to decide which way to go. Now bearing in mind I've had no help from the signage before or know what direction to go, what flashed through my mind was to continue north in the same direction as the travellers of Vauxhall Bridge Road, I would need to go to the right. That means the bus lane, but as a motorcyclist I'm allowed to use most bus lanes and there is no sign anywhere saying I cannot use this one. So any vehicles in front are completely blocking any road markings and my path now takes me into the bus lane. Now rapidly approaching and just a few metres ahead are two sets of traffic lights on the island and underneath them illuminated arrows which point in two different directions go straight ahead and to the right. And behind in the middle of these changing lights you might now see an unlit blue vehicle restriction sign. The sign's positioning next to two arrows, one pointing straight ahead and the other to the right, is totally ambiguous and I've no idea which direction I should be going. To get confirmation, I may glance to the right for another restriction sign, but there is nothing, none at all. This is despite there being ideal locations for signage on the right, either on the lamppost or on the traffic signal pole itself. Without these second signs, motorists have no clear way to tell which direction the restriction lies. The Department of Transport to Road Traffic Handbook says care should be taken to ensure that a single sign is clearly visible to all road users and does not give rise to issues relating to enforcement or road safety. Now, this island and the signs is at the entrance to Walton Road. It's the first and only sign telling motorists that there is a vehicle prohibition somewhere. There is no advance warning and motorcyclists in the bus lane are given no time to react or take evasive action. Also please note, in the surrounding area, it's standard practice to have signage on both sides of the, of the carriageway. The road signs handbook says, drivers should not be placed in the situation where they might not see the signs before starting to turn at a road junction. Also, at a road junction where the side is at an acute angle with the major road, two signs might be required so that it's clear as to which road the prohibition applies. As you can see here, I'm leant over and committed to complete the turn. And since Walton Road is a one-way street, when I realise what is going on, I can't swerve back into the other lane and I can't do a U-turn. TfL's enforcement machine springs into action and I'm issued a fixed penalty notice. And this is despite doing all that I could reasonably do to avoid finding myself in this situation. Now in disputing my appeal, TfL have put together some evidence to support their claim that the junction is adequately signposted. Let's take a closer look. This first picture of some traffic lights at Wilton Road has two restriction signs on either side, but they are not visible from my path onto Wilton Road. 
they offer traffic in the other direction, coming from the left, 90 degrees to my direction of travel. From my view, these two signs are edge on. Secondly, the way this photo has been cropped does not give the full picture. It does not represent a road user's eye view. From my point of view on the carriageway, this sign could relate to a prohibition ahead or to the right. And thirdly, it's also photographed at night when it's brightly illuminated by a spotlight. But my incident took place midday when the only things lit up on that island are the traffic lights and the one-way arrows. So in summary, the route leading up to Wilton Road is visually challenging. To keep everybody safe, you must watch for multiple dangers simultaneously. The signage on the left that's supposed to help motorists is completely hidden and extremely badly placed. And because it gives no information, motorists have no idea that there is a restriction up ahead. The single blue sign is at the start of Walton Road. Its position next to two opposing arrows is ambiguous. And you can only really see it when you've already started the turn. Also, there is no sign on the right to corroborate which direction it relates to. In their rejection letter, TfL also state that the Department of Transport say that this junction is up to standard. I strongly disagree, and I can only assume the assessment was done before the bus shelter was placed, the grey shed was built, and the tree was still a sapling. I therefore kindly urge you to uphold my appeal and cancel this penalty charge notice. Before I finish, I'd like to emphasise that my appeal is not born out of malice or me seeking to avoid a fine. I'm here because I'm driven by the knowledge that I tried to ride correctly that day, but I was let down by inadequate signage. My wish is that TfL and the Department of Transport reassess this junction to make it safer and easier for all road users, and so that other careful motorists aren't unnecessarily caught out in the same way that I was. Thank you for your time. Lastly, here are some hopefully helpful suggestions for TfL. Move this direction sign from behind the tree and bus stop and put it here, where it can be easily seen on approach or while waiting at the lights. On the island, replace the demure blue restriction sign with a backlit version that can be seen clearly day or night. And also put another sign here on the right for confirmation of prohibition direction. Better still, replace the blue sign with a more eye-catching red no entry or no right turn sign. Or preferably still, TfL could be a bit more sympathetic to the challenges faced by motorcyclists and simply allow us to turn into Wilton Road. It's easily wide enough to accommodate extra traffic and for vulnerable motorcyclists, it will be much safer than navigating the Ring Road too. Thank you again.